All right, ladies, we are live for the Parents Coffee Talk. Hello, everybody, and especially our mamas who are in, uh, I don't know how many days of homeschooling. Um, and we're here to really talk about homeschooling That's right. and uh, the challenges and the good stuff. And we have Dr. Katherine Clinton, who is a naturopathic physician, and I'm going to do her justice by reading her bio. Kath Catherine and I, Catherine is currently a homeschooling mom. Mm -hmm. I was forced to be a homeschooling mom for four years while, uh, because my son has chronic Lyme and hands. Didn't plan on it. So <laughs> we, I know how to do homeschooling when you don't, don't plan on it. And we want to be there to be there as a resource. We also want to tell you there's some tough times with homeschooling, and there's some good times. And we want to be able to give you those tips so you don't feel like you're drowning because everybody feels pretty overwhelmed whelmed right now, which is natural. Catherine Clinton is a naturopathic physician and she focuses on gut health and autoimmunity and psychomunology, which, you know, I love talking about. You guys haven't heard me geek out on that yet. Yes. So, oh, yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and she's an author and a speaker and a pediatric health um, advocate and she practices in Eugene, Oregon. And we're going to give you uh, all her details on how to reach her. We're going to give her an opportunity to talk about what she does and, you know, follow her tribe. So welcome and thank you for joining us on this global conversation um, of how to best support children and families during this time. Yes. Welcome, Catherine. We're so happy to have you here with us. Thank you so much. I am so honored to be here with you guys reaching out to parents this is a tough time for many mm -hmm. yeah it is a tough time and we're just in the beginnings of homeschooling like I, I posted a really funny picture of my husband and my um nine-year-old my nine-year-old is like what do you mean i have to do this every day like he thought it was a one-day deal <laughs> <laughs> that's I know. <laughs> He pulled out his negotiation skills and was like, <laughs> I do this, I can have this much time on the iPad, and you know, we get, we let him negotiate, but I was like, hey, you're not the only kid that is homeschooling. He was like, what do you mean? Right. And I was like, Everybody's homeschooling right now. Because this this son has never been homeschooled, right? It's well, he was homeschooled when he was really little. He doesn't remember. It. Okay. We homeschooled him till preschool. Okay. Um, I mean, until kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but he, he remembers everything, this kid. He's got my mother's memory. So he remembers <laughs> that. But um, he goes to a super non-traditional school. And, uh, but anyway, you know, homeschooling, you know, this isn't the homeschooling I did, you know, yes. when I did homeschooling, I wasn't, I'm not saying I wasn't working because I always was working, but we have parents, like my husband has literally got his computer next to my son's computer, the youngest, mm -hmm. and they're working together. And so it's, it's a challenge, right? Catherine, tell us about you and your homeschooling um, experience and how you, you know, help families in general. I would love to hear more about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's see. Right now, I have a 19-year-old in college. Wow. She, she was not homeschooled, but my two youngest have been homeschooled since the beginning. So they are now mm -hmm. six and ten. Mm -hmm. And um, I started with my son, you know, when he was in preschool. And it was a wonderful experience. And I just have really enjoyed it. Not to say that there aren't struggles, right? But I have really, <laughs> really enjoyed my time homeschooling. And, and it is, it can be a tricky balance because for myself, I have my clinical practice with patients. And then I have a supplement company that I run. And then I homeschool and also, I am a human, so there's that as well. And also, I'm a human. I love that. I know. Wait, you're not a super mom? Because I'm always like, this is like, we've been sold a, like a bad bill of goods with us being super moms because it's not achievable. I'm not no. saying we're all not hard workers and doing stuff, but, you know, we have this sense that like we can absolutely do, you know, juggle eight balls at once. 
and you know sometimes we can for moments but it's not sustainable so mm -hmm. this is going to feel a, like a lot for people and and i just want to validate that right us therapists like to say we want to validate mm -hmm. um but <laughs> it's going to be hard but like we can give you some hacks and that's what you're Absolutely. here to support Catherine, to support some of these parents because you're doing all those things and you have two younger kids mm -hmm. um which is is I think every level of homeschooling presents with exciting things and challenges. Like I loved all the fun stuff with the younger kids, um, you know, from science, hands-on kind of stuff and right. But you know, right. the, the challenge of families right now is their homeschooling is very dependent on what their school districts or private schools or individual schools are going to require of them. Mm -hmm. we, totally ill-prepared and so some districts are doing google classroom and hangouts some are doing zoom some are just doing packets mm -hmm. so um and some are doing some kind of hybrid kind of thing and some districts have already told um kids that they're, they're probably not coming back for the whole rest of the school year so there's a lot of unknown mm -hmm. um but i think the thing that i like to do always did in homeschooling is every day there was a visual schedule and some homeschoolers you know traditional homeschoolers just so you don't understand homeschoolers there's unschoolers who kind of let the day unfold and they just learn whatever that was never my thing uh-uh not for me <laughs> that, i was the first person to have people over to get together so we're not doing that now we're, we're doing physical distancing is what we should call it and then we should actually be socially connecting more but through digital platforms and we can talk about that another time but um so figure out your schedule get it aligned and everybody needs, needs to stick to a routine i don't know how you feel about that catherine absolutely you know i land somewhere in the middle i let a little bit of unschooling happen and what i mean by that is i set out a weekly plan with what we're going to do each day and then i I do have to go a little bit by their moods, mm -hmm. you know? Well, Sometimes. I think that's great advice. Absolutely, right? You know, you're giving them structure with flexibility, and I love that. Exactly. And I let them know, you know, that this is what's expected. All children have to learn. That's their job, just like I have a job. And I wouldn't be a good mom if I didn't teach them or I let them not learn something because their brains are too precious. Absolutely. Um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Their talents are too great. Their mm -hmm. skills are too enormous. The world needs them is what I say when they groan and <laughs> uh, no fractions today. Yeah. We're doing fractions because you're amazing and the world needs you. Yeah. I try to reframe it in that way because, because there is pushback, you know, just like some days we don't feel like going to work. They are, they are the same. So I find that Making a schedule is absolutely critical so that people know what's happening, so that you know what is happening, but also having just a little bit of flexibility. Um, I think all of us are a little on edge. There's a lot of uncertainty. So being gentle with our kids, being gentle with ourselves. If there's a day where we are snuggling watching a show instead of doing fractions, I count that as a win. You know, it can't be every day that we're doing that, but sometimes that's needed. Mm -hmm. and I totally agreed. I think that the challenge is right now, these are unexpected homeschoolers. And so it's just happened so quickly for people. People aren't prepared. They feel like, I don't know how to teach my kid, you know, this kind of math. Cause let's be honest, if you're a public school, and you're doing common core math, this is a whole foreign language. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. And it's horrible math. Just gonna validate that for everybody who's been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so, you know, giving yourself some flexibility for your own sanity and your child is important in, in understanding. And I think one of the things about homeschooling is really important is that. You know, you think your kid's at school for six plus hours and they can sit for six plus hours and they can't. Mm. So that is like, I want to give that as a saving grace for parents. Like, don't expect that. 
and make sure they're moving every 20 minutes. And if your kid wants to stand up at their table or take lots of snack breaks, these are good things. These are things that will help your child feel less stressed. Um, and I think that's really important. And, and I you know, also believe that the parents should show the kids their schedule because a lot of this uncomfortableness that's gonna come from for some parents where they're still expected to do work I mean, I'm finding so many people are not being excused from work. They're actually now expected to do full work from home, have um, full on video chats mm -hmm. online. Um, and you know how to do your online video chats. You put your good top on and you leave <laughs> PJ five <laughs> You got my good pants on now because I'm working. And then, you know, I full on bribe my kids. I'm like, hey, here's how, here's how it goes. You get to watch this show or you get to do this when mommy's on a call or Facebook live. And if you do X, Y, and Z, you earn something, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm all about earning. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have any problems. You got to do what works best for your kids, but you got to give yourself a little flexibility and permission. You know, some kids may be extra screen time and we're going to talk about, I mean, I would love to hear what you feel like or some great tips for parents to overcome their kids' boredom. Right? If I could ask yeah. a question as a now unexpected homeschooler, I, sh I really shouldn't take credit for that because it's really going to be my husband and with the help of my nanny doing a lot of the unexpected homeschooling. But I'll be doing a little bit of it. I was doing a little bit of it earlier today. And I'm just really curious. I was on meetings for our preschool and our elementary school last night and got to hear from a lot of parents in a lot of different circumstances. And they're both progressive schools. So that is one unique feature that may be different from other people's schools. But there are a lot of parents who... There are some parents who are still physically going to work and are now faced with how do they homeschool their children while physically going to work. And then other parents who are working from home, but they really still do need to be working. And in fact, they're under a heightened level of pressure because they feel layoffs, budget cuts coming. And so they feel like this is a time when their performance is even more important than ever and yet their attention and ability to perform are more divided than ever so dr catherine as as someone who's high performing but who is also homeschooling at the same time i would love for even before going into the tips about homeschooling just how do you navigate the reality of being a working mom a working parent and, and homeschooling, especially when you're not, you weren't prepared to do this, but regardless of the preparation part, like how do you just logistically juggle that? Yes, that is a big one. Um, and I think that it's really important, you know, for me as a homeschooling mom and doctor and business owner and human, I really have to kind of divide my time. I have to make sure um, Sunday afternoons, evenings are big for me. I line up the entire week. I line up our lessons. I line up my self-care time, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And I have all kinds of little things in the back of my head that I can do for tricks. You know, this, this weekend was as a physician in a state that's quarantined and seeing the numbers go up exponentially, it was a lot of work. <laughs> you know, I was on the phone with patients. I was on the phone with agencies and health organizations, and it was a lot. Um, so what I do is I also plan out times for self-care. So I did this on Sunday. It had been a long weekend, a lot of work, um, not a lot of me being present and one-on-one -on -one with the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So what we did is I said, okay, you guys, after dinner, we are having a dance party. And we turned up the music. And dance parties are one of the best ways that my family know how to shake off stress. Mm -hmm. But and, and Dr. Catherine, Dr. Cleopatra and I are regular dance party holders. At the Hodges oh, have a built-in disco ball in their basement. And anybody who's <laughs> been to one of our parties knows that. Just yes. let me know. 
And it's we awesome. Have, I love to hear you say have a dance party. Yeah, we do it every day too. Belly dancing, every kind of dancing. Yep. Absolutely. But Sunday, I didn't feel like dancing. Uh, yeah. So I, I cranked the music up for them. We too, we have not a disco light, but a little um, thing that you use at Christmas, like a laser light thing. Okay, cool. A little strobe yeah. light. Yeah, exactly. So we're on the same wavelength. But <laughs> But yeah, I did. I was exhausted. I was exhausted. And so I just told them, you know, it's been a long weekend and I'm, I'm exhausted and this isn't hitting the mark for me as far as self-care goes. Mm -hmm. So I took a hot bath mm -hmm. instead. I left them to their dance party. They understood. And I closed the bathroom door, lit a candle and took a hot bath because they needed to dance and I needed a hot bath. And so there are going to be times like that when, you know, our kids are so full of energy mm -hmm. and at, they should be, they should be. So providing them chances to wiggle and move and get that energy out, especially after screen time. Um, my yeah. kids are kind of sensitive to screen time. So when we use screen time, there's always a built in physical activity afterwards. Um, whether it's a dance party, wrestling, the punching bag, you know, whatever we can do to get that energy out. That's going to be really important for people um, nowadays is yeah. to remember that our kids are just balls of energy and dance parties. We have wrestling matches. Of course, we go over like consent and, <laughs> <laughs> and what stop me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we have to think about activities that are for kids of all ages, and certainly movement-based things are a wonderful um, addition to your homeschooling routine, but also they're feeling very stressed during this time. And I was even noticing today that even my pets seemed antsy, and my shy cat tiger um who's very very respectful of people and so skittish that poor cat right i don't know why he's so skittish because we love him up like crazy he was even trying to grab onto me with his paws today and i just share this because i think kids are feeling like an energy so physical energy activities that create movement are pretty awesome wouldn't you agree Catherine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They, and, and they pick up on that, right? I mean, we know about the heart brain. We know about uh, polyvagal theory. We know that our tone and our voice and our expression is picked up on by children, right? And, and some of that is going to be picked up on right now because some of us are, are stressed mm -hmm. and, and feeling that for sure. But there's other ways to get around that. You know, as a parent, I use this all the time in my homeschooling experience. And my, my youngest, my six-year-old, she has started to even pick up on it. You know, I will do my four count in breathing and my eight count out while talking to them in what I call the Mary Poppin voice. <laughs> and they know, okay, <laughs> she's getting a little stressed and we're going, and they appreciate it. And they're immediately more receptive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Can we get a little flavor of the Mary Poppins voice? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so <clears throat> I will come into a situation where there's some kind of pushback, right? Pushback or sibling fighting, or um, I left them alone to do a putty exercise and came back and oh my goodness, it was like something had exploded, right? So, <laughs> so Mary Poppins comes out and I'm breathing in through my nose. Okay, you guys, I'm really glad that we had fun with this. And I can tell you guys had fun with the putty thing. But the amount of mess, and see how I'm doing the breathing, <laughs> my daughter immediately picks up on it. Why is she breathing <laughs> quietly and, and steadily? <laughs> but it does, it changes the tone instead of me immediately reacting, saying, ah, what do you, what is up with all this putty everywhere and glitter and powder, you know, and, and it's a, 
now it's something that comes regular to me, mm -hmm. but it was something that I practiced. I actually envision Mary Poppins sort of, all right, children. I love that. <laughs> and just that <laughs> level of meeting them calmly was really, really profound. You know, it was such a shift in our connection. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I would really, um, really invite parents to do at this time is use this time to foster that connection with our kids and and they are smart they get it they are connected on so many levels that looking them in the eye and telling them hey this putty is a little much for me right now can we all help clean up the putty so i can have get back to a happy peace of mind or you know whatever it is whatever challenges come up calm deep breaths looking them in the eye and talking with them is huge i mean of course it depends on the age of your child right we need some reasoning abilities there mm -hmm. to do this um but even mm -hmm. even babies even our infants and toddlers pick up on our energy mm -hmm. and and to be honest my energy sometimes is all over the place and you know feeling overwhelmed and coming back to that practice for myself has been really really important mm -hmm. because it's not just how my mood and my tone and my energy affects them but obviously it affects me as well so mm -hmm. that's something that you know on social media this is the fourth day i've been doing a 21 days of connection mm -hmm. where i share a little exercise that the kids and i do together whether it's shaking it out or deep breathing today i just did one with chanting with um mudras that they can do with their fingers you know it's a meditation it's really hard to sit still as a kid to meditate but there are ways right now that we can really foster connection with ourselves with our children that we aren't given a chance to in everyday life most of us so there's another way to look at this as an opportunity to kind of foster that connection as well yeah and you know you you know whether you're using a calming voice or i use a lot of humor um you know again we're validating that you are going to be stressed out your kids are going to look to you to be calm um but you know i do things all the time like my kid just spilled something all over the floor and, and i'm like well of course the cleaning lady just left and broke that you know and he's like oh i'm like okay how are we how are we gonna clean it up you know and like it just and I'm so grateful for that experience, particularly with my kid who is easier, which he just responds to this, but this works with kids of all dispositions that no challenge is not something you can't get through, right? And so even though this right now is a challenge that's unprecedented for all of us, we've never had this in really our lifetime. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty that, you know, people are, I can't go anywhere without somebody freaking out. I'm gonna say that every day. And then I talk them off the ledge and love them up. And that's what we should be doing. And so I love that you're giving everybody these, you know, just very easy, actionable tips in your 21 days. And we'll share that information um, with people so that they can follow you and be on that journey with you. But, you know, kids can learn these things. You know, parents are going to feel tired and frustrated during the homeschooling process. So what are your recommendations for actually working with their kids during homeschooling? So I hear that you set a routine, but you keep a flexible portion. You also sort of like, you probably is do what I did, is I was like, here are non-negotiables. You gotta read this much, you gotta do this, and then blah, here are my suggestions, right. you know? Um, we're not always gonna have that kind of flexibility, you know, in terms of the, your kids gotta do this packet or that packet. But I think there is going to be flexibility. So what do you, what do you recommend for parents, you know, for kids that they're getting tired and they don't want to do the work? Well, you know, I think that one of our my best tools with my children is communication, right? Mm -hmm. And and like you said, humor is huge. Connecting with them is huge. Um, I think it was just two days ago I said, you know, guys, I'm on your team, so. Yeah. 
the way that we're talking together doesn't feel like a team right now. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be on your team, not just the one telling you all the things you need to do. And so when we think about a school day, I think a lot of us, I used to volunteer at my oldest daughter's school all the time. Um, and I think we, we have some you know, false ideas of what school is, mm -hmm. that we're sitting in a desk and these children are learning all day and the information's just flowing in that head. And that wasn't what I saw. You know, I saw a lot of busy work, a lot of uh, classroom management, learning how to clean up after yourselves. So I would really urge parents to, first of all, first and foremost, take it easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. Take it easy on yourself and remember that the amount of learning that's happening in a, a school day at a regular school isn't that six hours or seven hours they're there by any means. Um, the research we get our school done. Typically, one to two hours of one on one instruction. It's really about an hour of one on one instruction. That's what the research says, what it boils down to. I think of it a lot like what happens when people are in a workplace, right? People work full-time jobs, but when you look at the amount of actual productive work time, it equals something around three hours per day, right? So just because people spend a whole day at work or a whole day at school doesn't mean that they're only working and that they're only learning. Right. That's, some of my days look like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I would, I would urge parents to take that to heart and the flexibility that I mentioned isn't a uh, flexibility of like, Hey, we're not going to school this week. Mm -hmm. No worries, kids. But the flexibility is really taking into account the stress level and the attention level of our children. Right? So one of the things I do as a homeschooling mom is I center our learning around snacks and food. My kids are movers and shakers, complete wiggle butts. So I, it's really hard to get them. We do a lot of stuff that maybe isn't, um, you know, called for at this time with schools giving the curriculum. But, um, but with the stated curriculum that we do have and those kind of non-negotiables, mm -hmm. what I will do is I'll make sure to try and do it earlier in the day because they are more attentive, they are more focused at that time. I try to make sure that there's something inviting in the space that we're doing our work. So whether it be a snack, whether it's some tea that we make with a little bit of honey in it, um, I will even light a candle. Lighting a candle really brings the focus and attention to where we are. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, it's it's an hour or two. So usually we can get our school work done over breakfast and over lunch. Um, and and the flexibility part comes into like, are they starving? Because if they are starving when we sit down for lunch, they're going to be less attentive and they're going to be more cranky, right? Mm -hmm. So I might wait to pull out the school stuff after they're partway through their lunch. You know, it's, it's just remembering to, to go with the flow of what, what your kids are needing, right? So if you have some kids that are slow to wake up, Mm -hmm. um, trying to wake them up in the morning to get the schoolwork done might not be the best way to do it. You might want to let those kids have a little bit of extra downtime in the morning before mm -hmm. lessons um, start. Really finding a balance with your your kids' personality and with what's going on in their life and the the stress that they're under. Working with that, you know, um, this morning was was a good example of that at my house. Mm -hmm. I had been we'd been a little too flexible in the week. So I was like, okay, guys, we got to get this, 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 this done. And both kids said, well, if you read a chapter of Harry Potter, then we'll do it. Okay. I was like, okay, that was a clear call for a little more snuggles. Um, and, and being open to that and listening to that and taking advantage of it. Cause man, did those snuggles help me this morning as well.
Yeah. I mean, you're, you're very busy this week. And so, you know, we're kind of running around. My husband had texted me and was like, did you finish this today? And I was like, no, when you get home, you will do it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. running around, you know what I mean? Like I didn't stick to the schedule today. I'm not going to lie. You know, like I had a lot of things, but you know, I let my kid know who is also a Virgo. So he needs to know everything in advance. And you Virgos know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I him, you know, hey, listen, we're going off schedule, but this is what it's going to look like. And he's that kind of kid. So you have to meet kids where they're at, just like what you said. So some kids are very rigid and need that. Some kids can go with the flow. You don't want to take too much advantage, have that routine. Um, I, you know, definitely love to, you know, that you create these activities around things that they enjoy. And I would also say that, like, in terms of managing media, you know, there are other activities for kids of all ages, it's particularly art, mm -hmm. particularly reading. Mm -hmm. um, those are two things that people can do. If you got more than one kid, guess what? Break out the Uno, break out the Jenga. Yep. Um, and, you know, some kids, you got to be really explicit, like, don't even bother talking to me for an hour. I need you to do these things. I expect you to do it. Some kids, you need to be there and set up with that. Some kids, you don't. Um, pull out the Legos, pull out things that like are creation activities that kids can get absorbed and lost in time. And, you know, this will be a transition for them. They're off schedule completely in their regular life, like going to religious education or soccer or whatever. They're not doing any of that. So you're going to have to put some things into place for them and give them choices and you'll be surprised. So they're going to find a new routine mm -hmm. and you'll both, not only get through it, you'll actually hopefully enjoy some of this time because this is like a summer break in March mm -hmm. uh, without camp. <laughs> without camp. Absolutely. You know, just to reiterate something you said, uh, audio books are so oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. They, oh, I don't know amazing. what I do without the audio books. Yeah. Um, my kids now, we are listening to three audiobooks at once. <laughs> we're doing Percy Jackson. Um, we're doing the second book in The Wrinkle in Time. And uh, we are also listening, we're studying um, ancient Greece right now. So we're also listening to a historian book about uh, Greek gods and goddesses. But that's something, you know, if you combine an audiobook with some Legos, holy moly. That can last that a long so time. Good. If you give them something to do with their fingers, something to create, and then you give them something to listen to, you've got all kinds of senses going on right there, right? You've and got them. And there's too, Catherine, right? Like, um, there's a bunch of kids' past podcasts that are stories. There's science one, story on. I'll have that in our resource guide. Um, and we're going to have a resource guide on our website. You can go to www.drosan.com and it's a kit and it's free for everybody um, that's there that wants to get it. And we'll include your resources in there too, um, Catherine, because you have some good homeschooling. But, you know, that's what a great tip. Podcast. Oh, good. I love books, that. Audio books. You know, and kids are so used to being so active and busy, as you said, in school. And to get things through different senses is, is not only good for them because intellectually they're stimulated, it actually really helps their nervous system kind of get reset. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a win-win on a lot of levels. And it can keep kids occupied enough because I want parents to realize that we can combat boredom and that you can still have time if you have to do work or you have to do things at home or you need to take a bath. Mm -hmm. you know, care. whatever the need is you know it's about clear communication um and i think this is an opportunity for kids you know and parents to you know improve their communication um it, and there's always you know we didn't expect this um what are the gifts out of this right so this could be potentially a gift for people and I wonder how many people will continue homeschooling. It is on the rise. I was thinking about that too, because I could see a lot of things that we would, in our family, would end up loving about it. I wanted to, Catherine, you said something that I felt was so important for people to hear. I really wanted to underscore this for people because I, I know this from having listened to, I think, about 60 parents 
last night between the two school meetings. And it's this, that the idea that homeschooling doesn't have to be a whole day activity. You, Dr. Catherine said, we can basically complete our work over breakfast and over lunch. And I was like, because I realized that in our minds, those of us who haven't considered homeschooling before, it feels like something much, much, much bigger than that. And if it's just a matter of, as Dr. Roseanne said, starting the week and the day with a visual schedule, we just ordered a chalkboard where we could write what's happening each day of the week. So having the visual schedule and then knowing that these are the things that we one, two, or three things that we absolutely want to get to that day. And those things can happen anchored to things that we consistently do with the kids, which is feed them, right? And then it doesn't have to be this huge thing that they we can literally do it over breakfast and lunch. And then the times in between can be more flexible times and spaces like these activities that combine moving your body, moving your hands with listening to something enriching that that is a life-changing idea in this moment of unexpected homeschooling so i just wanted to really bring everybody back to that because that was a huge light bulb moment for me and i can't wait to share that with my husband and my nanny and even with the parents from our schools and so thank you so much for those pieces dr roseanne and dr Catherine, that you just really helped click for me I'm I'm so glad because that's, and that's, I got that from my family a lot. Like, how, what are you doing? How can you do school and see patients and run a business? Um, but time management, time management is, is really the key. Um, accessing that inner Virgo and making those plans, um, so to speak. And, and, you know, it's, it really can be boiled down to that because it is one-on-one -on -one learning. Mm -hmm. And, and like my son is 10 and he's learning at a fifth or sixth grade level. So he has a little bit more work to do than, than my six-year-old, right? Who's in first grade, but it's, but it's easy. We, do extra math, you know, not now because we're um, in our self isolation mode, but, but we would do, I would give them um, five or six math problems to do while we ran around town and did errands. Um, you know, and that's something that you can do at home as well, but it is, it's just these small little chunks of time interspersed between a greater connection with our kids. And that's how I saw it. And that's why I started doing it with my son. And that's why I continue to do it. It's been really, really rewarding. And even the trials really showed me hey, your reaction to stress needs a little work. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's been, them. yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah well, it's been really wonderful for all of us. Um, yeah, and as we kind of um, leave off our time with you, I want to be respectful because you literally are a busy girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very much so. You know, for, as, you know, and we'll continue this dialogue when Catherine leaves, but, um, you know, What's your overall best top tip for parents to make the best out of this time? I would, you know, there are times when I have a mantra going through my head saying, I'm so overwhelmed. I, uh, I'm so overwhelmed. So I would say that now is the perfect opportunity to change some of the ways that we are connecting with our kids to drop that mantra of I'm so overwhelmed, um, I don't know what's going on, to a mantra of I've been given a gift of connection with my kid. Mm -hmm. I've been given this opportunity to really connect with them as well as to connect with myself. You know, this gives us a chance to see how we are in relationship with our kids, right? We get to see how they see us. And sometimes that leads to some bigger insight on how, what kind of work we need to do as parents. You know, I, the biggest thing that I've enjoyed from my journey of homeschooling is my connection with my children. 
-hmm. and with my family and being able to, like I was talking earlier, be on the same team with them. It's been just life-changing. So my biggest takeaway for parents at home, while I know that mantra of I'm so overwhelmed is going on, there's also another one underneath there that says I've been given a gift and an opportunity to connect with my child. And it doesn't mean six hours of school where you're barking orders at them, you know? It can be school time over meals or a short amount of time and the rest of the time is a, a chance to connect. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful because, you know, you know, we know positivity, you know, really increases our happiness and our longevity. And so, you know, flipping that dialogue and how you're viewing things is not only a lesson for yourself, but you're role modeling for your kids. So that is awesome. And thank you. Um, how can people best reach you? We will have the links, but, you know, what's your website? You know, I know you're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm at Dr. Catherine Clinton, ND, on uh, Facebook, and you can find me at Dr. Catherine Clinton on Instagram. My website, uh, my personal website is being redone, so it's not up right now, but my site with my blog on my supplement company is up, yeah. and that's wellfuture.com. So you awesome. can always reach me there, and I'm like you guys, I'm active on social media and spending a lot of time these days, like you are, trying to reach out to parents and um, answer questions and be there as a resource. So I welcome everyone to, to reach out to me. And I just thank you guys so much for doing this. This is just Well, thanks for hopping on with us because yes. we're in dialogue that, you know, we, when you've been a homeschooler, it's like, oh yeah, you know, it, do you do things every day that you forget? And so we need to share that and help moms not feel so stressed. And I think um, even just knowing that you don't have to cram in every minute of the day with learning is just invaluable. Like I almost forgot that all the new mom homeschooling moms I would meet and they'd be like, how do you do it? Teaching six hours a day. I'm like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Oh, and we forget, God. we forget that that classroom management and, yeah. and the bulk of what's happening at school are real life skills. Yeah. So bring that home, bake Absolutely. some bread with your kids, Absolutely. have them fold clothes, have yeah. them, you know, have them participate in have real life. Meals, you know, have them do all those things that are really pretty incredible. So, um, incredible. This has yeah. Been and then we used to do, cause we had time for it. So, so anyway, Thank you. Be be the healer that you are. And I know you have patience to see. So thank you so much for taking time. Thank that you so really much for good. being here with us, Dr. Catherine. This has been really valuable and I know it's going to help a lot of families. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me too. Yeah. And keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you. We intend yeah. to. Thank you. Have a great day. You do the same. Thank you. So Dr. Roseanne, I have a question, which is, what is your feeling about having children who maybe want to be more flexible in how late they're sleeping in or um, uh, whether they're having enough social contact? Because I think these might be the kinds of questions that are in the backs of people's minds, especially in the back of people's minds, especially if they start to consider, well, actually, there are some really great things about homeschooling, but yeah. is my child going to get enough social contact? Um, yeah. Does homeschooling mean that if I have a child who would naturally sleep in longer, do I still need to have my child get up at 6.30 in the morning like they would if they were going into school? Will they be on Will they be less disciplined? Will they be on less of a rhythm? So for people that know they're not going back to school, and there are some people I've been having conversations mm -hmm. where their kids have already been told they're not going back to home. Yes. Um, so, and then for people that are like, hey, I'm going to keep homeschooling. You know, regular homeschoolers, what they do is different in this situation, right? So they adjust their schedule according to their lifestyle, not what a school schedule is. So we're gonna make an assumption that most of the people who are watching and listening are their kids are returning to school in a matter of weeks. We're gonna plan for that. You know, we've been told we're going back in a couple weeks. 
sort of, right? I, I think people need to be planning for two to four weeks at a minimum that their kids are going to be out. I think that's what's going to happen. I think the federal quarantine is going to come as well for a one to two week period. So with that, uh, I think you should generally stick to a sleep schedule. Um, does it mean that if your teenager was getting up at 5.30, you should still get up at 5.30? No. Um, but what I want people to realize that you can't just make a hard switch. If your kid's sleeping till one o'clock for three weeks, and then you say, well, guess what? We're going back to school and we got to get up at 5.30. It's going to be brutal. And it takes 15, you can only supposedly change your sleep time by 15 minute increments. So that means 12.45, 12.30, and that's going to take a long time that you don't have. So be reasonable. Should it be 8 a.m.? Should it be 9 a.m.? Even that's going to be tough to transition back in a couple of weeks. But they need time. They need sleep. So I would say on the other end of that is don't let them fall asleep with their devices. Dr. Tom talks all about sleep, and he can go into that. But don't let them fall, you know, fall asleep. Do that. So have a routine. Have a schedule. I agree with Dr. Catherine. Get your harder stuff done first. Never, even if you have to do work, don't let your kids start off the day with their iPad and their devices. You do, it's going to be nothing but arguing trying to move from that. Great, um, That's a great pro tip. <laughs> I mean, you know, so if a TV doesn't have the same kind of neurological effect that a device does, particularly a touch screen, the touch screen, we know through research is more addictive. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a hard time. And plus, just stick to your schedule. So do your schedule, do your pieces. You know, if your school district, like our school district has online math, right? Or our school has online math. So we were like, okay, you're going to do this. And then you're going to do this. Obviously, Dr. Rodan didn't do it today. So I'm um, a bad example. But, <laughs> but we did. And we there are going to be days like that. It's yeah, we made a negotiation for after lunch. And it was fine. So, you know, it was fine. It's like, okay, we can do it after lunch. Fine, no problem. Whatever. We just shifted our day. Um, and, and I have the kind that my younger kid can do that. Um, my older kid can't. So think about that. And then I want people to think about different learning activities. Learning activities are not just paper and pencil. That's They're great. writing sentences and this and that. So let's talk about what you can add in. You certainly talked about art. We talked about awesome games. What about problem solving games? Who doesn't love Battleship? Who doesn't mm -hmm. love Pin 4? Is the super problem solving games teaches executive functioning? Um, and, you know, sort of, you know, planning and engagement. It's a lot of fun. It's quick. It's, it's short things. It's my truly my all time favorite game. I do love Jenga too. And I'll have this in the resource guide. Um, we have a chess table set up on our kitchen table. So um, my boys like to do chess when they're eating. So that's fine. And they just get a quick little, you know, they're always playing a game. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, our doodling, drawing, there's a lot of activities. I had a prop for that. Now I can't find it. You can do those kind of things. One of my all-time favorite uh, homeschooler ever activities, we still do it today, even though we long abandoned homeschooling for a lot of reasons for us. It just couldn't work anymore. Um, with my travel schedule and whatnot, but is lap books, L-A-P. And in our resource guide on www.rosanne.com, you can get it um, with resources on how to make it. And a lap book is this crazy simple thing. It is a um, manila folder that you then turn into like the coolest display, visual display of an area you're going to do a deep dive on. How so fun I, is that? It's so fun. It's so fun. And you can make it like super fancy and whatnot. So I said to my youngest, I said, hey, what are we going to learn extra this week? And, you know, my kids are science crazy. Most kids really into science. So we decided we were going to do like natural gases. Okay. So he was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. So we're researching on the internet. We're cutting and pasting. We're coloring. We're gluing. I mean, I do this, like, um, I'm notorious for pulling my kids out of school and going on vacation. 
So my kid's school was like, it's educational, right? So we would always make a lap book, both kids. Didn't matter, doesn't matter how old they are. On the vac- you would make the right. lap book about the vacation that you're going on? Uh, what a great idea. We study that place. Mm-hmm. I love to go to an island. I'm not going to lie. You and me both. <laughs> you and me and then both. We study it. And I always, most places we go to as a family, we usually do a tour or hire a guide. You can hire guides very inexpensively. I know nobody's thinking about travel. But that's how I even weave it into everyday life. And you need to think about learning differently. Again, mm-hmm. I don't want you being like, I expect you to have an essay on this. You know, um, places are offering free courses. Um, you know, if your kid is a high schooler and they're really going to have an interrupted education and you're worried about them keeping a high level education, guess what? These IVs, and I have the, um, the link to it, you know, are all given these free courses. So instead of your kids sleeping until one o'clock, say, hey, this is, you know, you you want to be a um, an accountant. You want to be a, a sports writer. I don't know. I have so many interesting kids that come to me from all over. Do a course related to that. And then that's going to go on your transcript, you know? So there's lots of opportunities. So exciting. There, this is actually, you know, with all of the things that are hard about this moment in time for the world, health-wise, for our healthcare workers, financially, just the, the yeah. unknowns, there, there's this, there are so many exciting opportunities that come from changing the way that, you know, do, doing business in a way that's not business as usual from changing the way that we're living. And this is such a cool opportunity for our children to learn about new things. I remember getting to college and feeling like this whole world had opened up for me because there are all these electives and I could learn about not just things that were required of me, but things that really excited me that nobody had put so in front of me before. Right? And this is an opportunity to do that. So I think that's, there, yeah. there, in addition to the incredible opportunity for connection that this moment in time presents us with our children and, and finding creative ways to connect with other people as well and other families. And that's important too, you know, and I also want to say that, you know, the part about, you know, homeschooling and whatnot, you know, a lot of homeschoolers make an incredible financial sacrifice to be full-time homeschoolers. So here's the benefit to you all. There is an, a lot of free resources available. So if people are in financial distress, you know, this is stuff that's free. Podcasts are free. You know, there's uh, downloadables for free. You know, these courses are now going on for free. Now, you don't need to sign up for a, a K-12 education at this point. Um, but the other part of homeschooling is being socially connected. So I was never more socially active as I was as a homeschooler. It's one of the biggest misnomers that they're not socially active. It's totally the opposite. They are actually really playing. I believe playing unstructured play. And I used to have at least three play dates a week minimum. It was out of control. It was really fun. Um, but we would even do things like, you know, the moms and I would get together and we can't do this, but you know, you can do virtual play dates. Make sure your kids That's are what we're doing that. now. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Set up on zoom on them, you know, yeah. so they can all play around and, and, you know, do that. And, you know, maybe they listen to an audio book together. Ask your kids what they want to do. This is new. They're going to figure it out. You know, maybe make a contest with your kids that, you know, your besties and your kids are doing like a, you know, maybe they're having a dance party online. Um, you know, my friend said her and her girlfriends are all getting together online um, tonight and they're just getting together because they always get together and they're in their 20s and they're really like, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to see each other. Your kids are going to want the same. So whatever structure and routine you can put together, you know, and this is the time we're all going to be together. You will get on your nerves at times, just like on vacation sometimes when you're together and it <laughs> rains for three days and you're like, oh, great. You know, you know, I, it's true. So, <laughs> so make sure you're providing some options for your kids. You know, don't say go figure it out. They, this, they don't know what to do. They haven't done this in a while. It's not like they planned on this you know when your kids are younger you still had to set those things up for them and don't let your kids be on your devices for 10 hours it's it's 
not healthy for them. You'll be irritated. They'll be crabby because it's so terrible for their nervous system. But, you know, homeschooling with structure, knowing what the school is wants you to do, um, and just good communication is with routine is a really a way to not only sur survive, but really thrive mm -hmm. during this time. You and I think, I think all of that, that all of that feels like it rings so true for me. And, and on top of that, adding that mindset shift that you and Dr. Catherine were just talking about, which is instead of this is so overwhelming, flip it around to this is, this is a really unique opportunity and I'm, I'm up for the challenge, right? Yeah. We, we get to, we get to see what we're really made of in in these moments that are unexpected and that bring unique challenges that we haven't faced before mm -hmm. so that's really exciting so dr roseanne you know that i work with women throughout the mommy life cycle and especially during what i call the trimester when they're preparing for getting pregnant they're working on their fertility overcoming fertility challenges and reproductive aging. And I, one of the things that I teach them is that they're living the pregnant life before they get pregnant, that they're, they, they're beginning to parent their children before they're even pregnant because they're already setting up the life that their children will live, the health their children will have, the gene expression their children will have. And so I'm curious about how this topic of homeschooling really maps onto the trimester and the process of preparing for having their babies and beginning their parenting journey. And one of the things that I think is really interesting about this moment, even for my what I call my in the future and conceiving mamas, is that it's really a, a, an exquisite training ground for the flexibility that having our children out in the world with us already requires. So can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, it's so interesting is I, I think what you're really saying is that this is opening the possibility of the cool stuff about homeschooling to moms who would have never thought about it. And, you know, it is a very, very popular thing, you know, and my, in my state in Connecticut is a very homeschooler friendly state, meaning that, you know, um, it's pretty easy to just say we're going to homeschool. Other states require all day lesson plans and different things. New York State's right here. I border New York um, does that. So, you know, what are some really cool benefits for some of these moms and what are they thinking about is, you know, it did provide a lot of flexibility for me um, for quite a number of years in that we could travel. I brought my kids to work with me all the time. I, you know, I'm the boss. I allow my employees to bring their kids to work um, as long as it's, they're not running down the hallway and creating all this noise. But, you know, this is kind of the cool thing that we, we've been able to do. Um, and it also just, it, it gave me um, flexibility to actually work with my patients when I needed them to, because I wasn't caught in, it has to be this time, it has to be that time. And my kids are different learners. So when you think about these moms that are, you know, already having a family preconception, right? You know, we have all these ideas about what our kids need and don't need. And, um, you know, as you can imagine, my kids are just really divergent thinkers. They're not, you know, in the <laughs> as you can story. imagine. <laughs> nope. um, and there really isn't a place that that, you know, we found a place for them that's very progressive. I call it the hippie school. Um, and it's really um, a different kind of learning. It's very heavy science. It's a democratic process school. So my kids have a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are a very discussion-based family. And both my husband and I are just, you know, we're both different kinds of thinkers. We're like, hey, this is the way it is. I wouldn't have made it today. I was glad I grew up in the 70s and 80s where, you know, in the 80s, I, on my, um, you know, uh, state standardized testing in 10th grade, I made pictures and turned it <laughs> So, and I didn't get put in a special class. They just let it go. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can't do it today. It <laughs> so those are my, my kind of kids. Like, we need to be, like, stimulated physically, mm -hmm. mentally. My kids need to be able to eat snacks all day. Mm -hmm. They can in their school. So, 
it's not a perfect school. It is the right school for them. And homeschooling was an absolute joy. It just got to be, for me, where we live, we had to drive to a lot of classes. But I think moms need to think about it. There's wonderful co-ops. There's wonderful communities all over the United States. Um, there's Christian-based counseling. There's, you know, uh, uh, science-based um, homeschooling, I should say, not counseling. There's all different kinds of ways to do it. And, and it is an option. I think the parents that are doing it now, you know, we're just in shell shock. Like I've, I've now started talking about day one, two, and three of basically preparing for the quarantine. So I have friends in different parts of the country and the world that are under quarantine. And day one, you're in shock. You feel like your freedoms, your liberties are taken. Day two is like, what am I, the heck am I going to do? What am I going to eat? What am I, how am I going to work? How are my kids? And day three is like, I got it. I can do it. So, um, you know, so I want moms and dads to feel empowered by that. You know, uh, moms often are their CEOs of the family. So, um, you know, they're often in charge of education too. And just do your best. Do your best. I think that's so critical. I yeah. think I think this is a really good time to uh, to allow ourselves to release any perfectionism that we have, mm -hmm. especially around parenting, and also to to know that not everything has to have the highest standard or the highest bar. Some things can be some things. Some things are non negotiable for high standards and a high bar, and a lot of other things just good enough is okay. Yeah. And, you know, just realize that we are all stressed. So yeah. like, let's give each other a little more patience, um, a little more snuggle time. Yeah. Um, nobody, you can't have enough snuggle time. I no, don't care how old that kid is. <laughs> it's just going to happen. It is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a hard time not shaking anybody's hands right now. But, you know, I'm a double kisser, Italian, you know, we, I mean, I, both. Yes. I know. So, you know, a lot of, oh, but you can hug your family members, you're on quarantine. So, um, but, you know, just be empowered. You will get through this. Look at homeschooling. You know, now just realize it's a lot shorter than you think. You don't need your kids to be forcing, cracking the whip, screaming at them all okay. day. You know, okay. set a plan, get through it, and have alternative fun things, and try to connect through activities. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. I enjoyed very much all of that learning. Um, and particularly the art, like I loved the art and um, I did a lot of Lego building. We had Lego build offs in our house all the time. We still have them as like trophies and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Dr. Roseanne, <laughs> tell everybody you've created an incredible resource for people yeah. who are just starting to learn about homeschooling. So tell everybody yeah. where they can find this resource, please. Well, in our survival guide, so we have a quarantine, Cleop Dr. Cleopatra and I together have made um, a quarantine survival guide and in there is a homeschooling guide. So just go to www.drrosanne.com mm -hmm. and it's right on the homepage and um, you know, put in your email and we'll send it to you. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. We'll also put the link in the comments. Have a gorgeous day, mamas. We are here with you and for you. We are going to continue our parents' coffee talks through this week and also next week. We have a lot of incredible experts lined up, and I think we have a couple of days where we have some flexibility. So if you have any special requests of topics that you wish we would cover that you really need help with right now or you just have specific questions about things that we've already covered, then drop them in the comments. Feel free to message us and we can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Bye, Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Bye.